Metal Mike here, and in this episode of the 80s Glam Metal Cast, it's a KISS theme episode. It's KISS, What Ifs and Whys, with a special guest. Topics include what if Vinnie Vincent stuck around for the Animalize album, what really went wrong with the Elder, and what would the future of KISS have been without the 1996 reunion. We also present up some KISS projects, things that we would do if we were given the keys to the KISS kingdom. Now our guest reveals some cool insight about KISS stuff that you probably never heard anywhere else before. And that guest is KISStorian Bob Nash. And they call him Robert Nash. Nash. KISS Wizard Robert Nash. Call me Robert Nash. Gives you those KISS answers first. Call me Robert Nash. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, cause he is the Robert of the Nash. That's right. Well, Bob, welcome back to the 80s Glam Metal Cast. And how about that intro song? What do you think? Mike, I, uh, I can't believe something like that actually exists. Uh, I know my kids, they love it. And I mean, who else gets those kiss answers fast, right? I mean, <laughs> I try. I'm not on Twitter 24-7, but I do try to get them fast. Maybe I'm not always right, but uh, boy, that that uh, that intro sure struck my ego. Thanks, Mike. That's uh, <laughs> you got that, it, man. That, that says a lot, and that, and to calling Doctor Love no less. Thank you. <laughs> oh man, my pleasure, my pleasure. Well, hey, I wanted to have you back on because people really seem to like listening to you with your voice talk about Kiss. So I said, you know what? Let's dedicate a whole episode. We'll touch. We'll do a couple, uh, you know, questions and probe some uh, Kiss theories, and then maybe uh, we'll end off with if we were given the keys to the Kiss kingdom, what kind of projects would we spearhead? Sound like a plan? Sounds great. All right. Well, let's jump in, Bob. So we got to talk about The Elder. So many people have theories, and some people love it, some people hate it. In your opinion, why was The Elder such a disaster? Bad timing. People were yeah. done with Kiss. I mean, it's hard to under, it's hard to put it into words, you know, why people didn't take the L to the elder. I mean, was it the polarizing new look? It couldn't have been the look, at least not instantly, you know, because my thing was when the album was released, it was pretty much dead on arrival. Right. And, and it, it just was, it wasn't being played. MTV didn't play the video, uh, you know, the world without heroes. None of that was even considered, you know, none of that was played. There was no push for them. So my thing was, it couldn't have been the new look. Most of us didn't get a glimpse of what they looked like. There was, they were not on the album cover. Mm, yep. You know, I just think it was just different taste. I think, the, I think Unmasked, or is, is, as great as it was, just people, were, people in 1980 were like, that's it, we're done. There was too many other things that people had already turned their attention to. Yeah. Too many other bands. 1980 was a big year. We don't really have to go into all that, but we know... The bands that released records, the hard rock bands, and what they did. And Kiss, you know, they just couldn't keep up with that. A lot of their diehards kind of turned away from them in 76 when they released Destroyer. Right. Because they felt that was, uh, that was too much. You know, because they were, you know, they were becoming that family-friendly family friendly band. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, The Elder is just one of those things that it just, it had to happen. They had to go through it. I'm glad they went through it. You know, most people, you know, they, no one took to it back then. No one took to it. Now everybody that, you know, it, it's it's kind of funny too because that album should have went. As many as many people have said that the, you know that they you know they bought the out the elder when it came out and all that. It, it probably would have gone gold back then. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it's just it's just I I just think people were done. People had just turned their attention to something else, and Kiss were just kind of you know they were old news. I mean, in my world, they were, you know, they were putting out new music. I didn't care. I bought it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still have the receipt from Montgomery Ward, <laughs> you know, when I bought my Elder record. So, I mean, I can sit there and say, yeah, I bought it when it came out. But why it failed? I mean, a concept record, a movie, a proposed movie, uh, you know, a new member, a new, um, well, I'm sorry, a new drummer. It, it's just, it just had all the recipes for disaster. Uh, you had Bob Ezrin too at the helm. You had you had management. You had people leading them in ways which they, they paid them to to lead them in the right way. But they weren't really given the direction they should have. You know, and there's a reason a coin was so there's a reason a coin was fired. Mm -hmm. There's a reason uh, they didn't work with Ezrin for a long time after that. I mean, like Gene said, you know, you, you fucked up. You know, yeah. you, you, your head wasn't clean. I'm talking about Ezrin. You know, he was never there for the sessions and and. It, it, the album was just all over the place. 
now it's like this endeared classic. Everybody talks about the elder. Oh well, you know there's been High School Musicals that you know dedicated to right. it. There's been uh, there's there's been a fan there's been fan movies. There's you know fan merchandise. People just are just they're taken by this 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 album that really is not a favorite of the bands. Paul Stanley hates it. Paul Stanley hates this record. He hates it. The fact that he even played some of it on the Kiss Cruise is a miracle. But why it failed, couldn't tell you. But I just think my honest answer, people moved on. There was a reason the Unmasked only went gold. And there's a reason they didn't tour. You know, there's a reason they didn't tour for Unmasked here. You know, they, there was no there was no support. They knew they weren't going to be able to. You're not going to take Kiss who once played arenas doing theater, theater, theater-sized venues. It's just not going to work. They're Kiss. They're too damn big for that, you know. But honestly, I just think that it was just people that just kind of said, you know what, we're good, we're done. And we're just going to kind of turn our attention to some of the other bands that are out right now that are making heavier music, better music, you know, some people's opinion, you know, better, better music. And maybe just everything was just old. Maybe just people just had their, their, their tastes have changed. Things have changed. You know, their fan base just kind of moved on. Their diehard stayed with them, but the fan base moved on. Yeah, you know, it's hard to say. It definitely happens. I mean, I know, um, I know we've discussed it before. Uh, you know, messaging each other back and forth. But I think from a marketing standpoint, there was a couple key things that went wrong. Uh, I do think I don't think cutting the hair helped. I don't think it would have saved him, but I don't think it helped. Um, I don't, being not being on the cover, I think, was a big fail. And I think opening I uh, with a ballad, uh, with a slower song for your first track. Because if you th- you've seen the clips of them in Australia and everything, they keep asking, what's next for you guys? Oh, we're going to do a heavy metal record, right? And I think yep. people were thinking, all right, we're going to get Creatures of the Night, kind of. You know, that, maybe that's, what, that's yep. ultimately what was kind of promised. Uh, and then we get The Elder. And you know what fascinates me is about, about with all this whole era is the album that they were trying to make before it became the elder because i love deadly right. weapons and I, and I know there's all the little musical demos that are out i would have loved to have seen what they would have done once again i don't think they would have had a huge hit uh in 1981 no matter what but uh, i would have loved I to have seen what that album would have been like you know it's a shoulda woulda coulda you know what i mean it's it's that you know what if and i agree had they been on that album cover and people got to see that that was an actual kiss record and not just a hand on a door, and then you open it up, and it's a table. And I remember when I opened that up, that record, I'm just like, Where, where's the band? I'm looking for po- posters or stickers inside there, and I'm like, well, where are they? You know, I didn't know what they looked like. And then finally, you, you know, see issues like 16, I think it was 16 Magazine, that was one of the first uh, magazines to actually publish a picture of them. Mm-hmm. And I, I was like, this is Kiss? Okay. I don't, I don't get all the zippers and everything, but okay, that's... What they want to do, let them do it, you know? I just think that it was just, I love that look, and I love just, I love everything about that elder look. I love that photo shoot that they did with Barry Levine. Yeah, it's cool. But why couldn't one of those pictures been the album cover? I just, I just will never understand a hand on a door. Just, I don't get it. (laughs) Maybe on the back cover, but not on the front. You know, especially, like, I think the cover of Killers is great. That would have been a cool album cover. It's a great cover. And everyone instantly associates that with Killers the minute they see it because that's what they, you know, they see that picture. I remember I tweeted an outtake, uh, and I said something about an Elder outtake. I had everybody on there trying to correct me, saying, oh, this is from Killers. I'm like, no, this is from the Elder. Mm -hmm. There was a few photo sessions that day. This is all the leftover stuff. The costumes don't lie. The hairstyles don't lie. Mm -hmm. It's from the Elder. But... Again, that's what they associated it with. So, I mean, hey, I, I, if they could have did something like that, like you know, with, you know, like what they did with Killers, with those four songs, and, mm-hmm. and kind of like a return to form. Who knows what they could have did in '81? But I really think they really had to go through that. They really had to go through that whole lose to win kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Even with Creatures, Creatures was that return to form. It was them back to basics. It was them, you know, reclaiming their purpose. That was them being a, a metal band. They were just kind of. I don't know. It was just, it just seemed like at that point the makeup had kind of run its course, though. All these bands were, you know, Judas Priest out there, you had Iron Maiden, every, all these bands were different and they were interesting. Yeah. And yet you have Kiss, who was in 1982, you know, 1982, still doing the same thing they were doing in 1977. So something yeah. has to give. Yeah, it was definitely you know, di- different. It, yeah, definitely a different era. Like you said, there were so many big, exactly. big metal bands. Exactly. And, 
it blows me away. We really, and I think I, I think I talked with Rich about this when, when, when we talked. Is that it? Really, yeah. kind of blows me away that even in 1980 that they were so out of touch with reality. Because, like you said, they had toured with Priest, uh, Scorpions. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all those guys were doing yeah. heavy hard rock records, and here they are doing that, you know, bubblegum pop, pop music. Yeah, pop music. Yeah, as much as I loved Unmasked, don't get me wrong, and I love Dynasty. I mean, in Dynasty, I give Dynasty a pass because that was '79. Yep, me too. Disco. You know, it yep. was, they were they were they were man, they were full on you know family fun entertainment at that point. Um, their music wasn't exactly um, what's the word I'm looking for. It wasn't really edgy. Mm-mm. You know, you could listen to that in the in the car with your mom. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, it couldn't exactly put on you know Judas Priest unleashed in the east or something mm-hmm. like that with your parents they might they oh, turn that off you know that kind of thing but they were you know they they were they were I, I give dynasty a pass just because that was 79 it was you know they were they were doing that i was made for loving you they had the crossover hit with that but in 1980 you're still going to use Vinnie Poncia you know yeah. and then you're going to you're going to kind of stay the course and make another pop record no. you know and 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 for all intent purposes I asked did what was successful here but not to me not up to kiss standards no it should it was i mean a gold record is a gold record but kids yourself not there is a reason that band booked the palladium to debut eric Carr. they couldn't get there they, there's no way they could have sold the garden no nope. no way no way so and 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 they knew it and they were super kiss you know at that point mm-hmm. so you you know Super Kiss can do anything. <laughs> Super Kiss doesn't fail. And, and, and it's funny, and it's funny too, another point. It's amazing, getting back to the Elder, as tight as that band played on the Unmasked tour. And those, those I have countless bootlegs of, of, the, of the four of them. Oh, killer. They're amazing. Killer. Why in the hell we didn't get an Elder tour with that lineup, I'll Ooh. never know. Yeah. Honestly. As tight as they were, as good as they were, Honest, honest to God, they were firing on all cylinders at that point. Mm-hmm. I mean, Carr was just the, the breath of fresh air they needed, and it, I can't imagine. I, I, I just can't even get over the fact that we didn't get an elder tour. Yeah. Yeah, that's a shame. And we, we've seen all the drawings that come out on, on Twitter, right? So there, it looks like there was the magical orb and all this shit. It would, it would have been cool, but it just interest wasn't there. Well, you know what's funny, too, is Mark Rabbits, you know, who designed that, you know, he was the guy that designed some of the early stuff, too, for them. Mm-hmm. So he was, you know, he, he definitely had a plan of, of what he wanted, and it was way out there. I mean, can you imagine Ace Freely with a jetpack? Can you imagine that? <laughs> oh, been I mean, I want to see that. I'd pay good money to see that. Uh, you know, good. a well of the unknown monks, you know, creatures and giant spiders. Yeah, count me in. I'd, I'd like to see that. Oh, We'd good. be looking at that now, like, you know, with, with with such uh, such nostalgia, going oh, you remember that? Remember that eighty one Elder tour? You know, <laughs> I mean, I could only imagine how great that could have been or would have been. Yeah, but no doubt, man. Guess we'll never know. We'll never know. Well, let's move on to Animalize because this is one I've been thinking about lately, and and I feel like this is you know this album has some really high points for me, and it has some real low points. And then when I think yeah. of the low points, I start to think like, okay. What could this have been like if Vinny Vincent's hands were involved? If, if they could have held on to Vinny, you know, another year, uh, what are your thoughts yep. on that? Could, could he, if you, could he have improved this album? Yes, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I agree. Hundred percent. I've had this conversation countless times. If if Vinny Vincent had signed a contract to stay in that band, just or or to be a member of that band, analyze. Don't get me wrong, it was a successful record. It was. Basically, it was a Paul Stanley solo record. <laughs> yeah. We all know it was his baby. We all know it was his baby. Gene, you know, for the most part, kind of phoned it in a little bit, but, you know, you're yeah. a Kiss fan, you don't care. Gene's on the record. Yep. But yep. if you would have had the songwriting of Vinny Vincent and what he did for Preachers, what he did for Lick It Up, we would be talking a whole different ball of wax for Animal Eyes, mm-hmm. without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. And, 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 and you know what? I honestly think it would sound, it would have sounded better too. Yeah. It just would have, sonically, it would have sounded better. I, there's something, there's something about the production on that, that I know I, 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 I read, you know, certain things that, you know, like Michael James Jackson, you know, came in to help produce, you know, cause Paul was a little overwhelmed and stuff like that, uncredited or did, did things behind the scenes. But I mean, for the most part, the drums are kind of muffled. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it, it, sonically, it's just not a really, crisp record mm-hmm. if, that, if, that, if that sounds right but i mean it just doesn't sound that good it's, it's, you know i can still listen to it to this day but if you 
if Vinny would have kept his head on and just signed a deal with the band, you know, and honestly, Gene explained that to me the, when, when I was with him the one time mm -hmm. of what that deal was and why it was so important and how Vinny just wouldn't sign. And, you know, and now he's out of the band. And he's one of those guys that, you know, we all still talk about. We're all still fascinated by him. Sure, he's weird, but boy, do we sure like talking about Vinny <laughs> Vincent. Yeah, well, I, I, I got a couple of thoughts. Well, I'll, I'll, first, I'll, before I get off track, I'm going to stick with the animalized thing. So, so in my, you know me, I like to play games with these things. I like to try to figure out what, what would I do. So I guess my thoughts were, what I came up with today is I would take off three songs and I would throw in okay. some songs that were on the Vinnie Vince Invasion album. Now, I know some of those songs were intended for Creatures of the Night. He'd been kicking around, you know, back on the streets and all that kind of shit. He's been kicking yeah. that around. But I say, for me, I'm not big into Get All You Can Take. It's okay. I, but I think it's a weaker Paul track. And I detest, okay. I detest Murder in High Heels and While the City Sleeps. I think they're the most... Really? Just, oh, I can't stand either of those songs. I hate them. I don't know why. I hate those songs. So so I don't like those songs. So what I would do is I would get Boys Are Gonna Rock somewhere in that album. I would do Back on the Streets. Um, and I definitely would do Animal. And I would call it Animal Eyes. How about that? And, uh, That's interesting. I'm on the fence with No Substitute. I love No Substitute, but I don't know if Kiss could do it. But um, Animal... Right. I, yeah, I was listening to Animal today, getting kind of prepared for this. And I was like, could you imagine? They could still say Animal, but call the song Animal Eyes. And, uh, right. and you know, it starts with, eh, yeah, you know, I figured that could be a Gene thing. Gene could have sang that song because, um, you know, you could you could uh, tune it down or do whatever. And, and you know, same thing. If Vinny was in the band, you know, maybe Gene would have jumped onto that song as he did, I think, with a lot of the Vinny songs and just kind of throwing a few lines and now it's a Vinny Vincent, Gene Simmons uh, track. You know what I mean? So I agree. If Vinny was in that band, you just said you just raised a good point. If Vinny was in that band, maybe Gene would have been present more often. Right. Right. You know. Yep. Maybe Paul might have been threatened because of the songwriting. Maybe, 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 maybe they could put differences aside and really write a great record like they've done in the past. Yeah. You know, it's the reason they keep going back to the well with this guy. Yeah. You know, like, again, you can say what you want about him, but uh, you know, he's a good songwriter, and he's been, he's, been, he's got some talent. You oh, know? he does. Fucking yeah. crazy, but he's got talent. Yeah. You know, it was weird. Um, Somebody messaged me on Twitter. I think it was today or, or yesterday, and they were, and, and I was kind of just asking people for, you know, we got any questions, anything you want me to talk about on the podcast, and they just kind of let loose on there about Vinnie Vincent, and I said, you know. I don't know the guy. I've never met him, but I've you know we all heard the stories. But I I really yeah. think that his brand is valuable. If he had a manager that could discipline him and and market him the right way, that he's got he's got something there. He, it's just it's, it's unfortunately because it just feels like everything he does he kind of botches or it's done half assed. So if it was he done does. right, I think this guy could really be making some money right now. He's you know what though he's tried. Um, he really did have some decent management at one point. He screwed over so many people, man. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you you would really you, you keep saying, well, maybe he's changed, maybe it's different, but no, it's not. <laughs> the things I've heard, even just some of the stuff I just heard recently, I'm just like, yeah, I still like the guy, but it's like, wow, it's hard to like the guy yeah. because he just doesn't give a shit. He worries about Vinny, and you, like like you said, if he got someone that would really discipline him and really say, look, let's make some money. Um, you know, we, we, you know, you can only do these autograph convention signing things so much. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's get back. Let's write some songs. You know, let's, let's, let's get the, let's get the name back out there. Let's prove to people that there's still some validity to it. Let's prove that you're not just this, you know, crazy no show guy that's obsessed <laughs> with money or takes fan money and doesn't deliver the goods. You know, let's just put it out there and let's, let's, let's just see if we can fix it. Because there's a lot of fans that still love this guy. There's a mm -hmm. lot of groups that are dedicated to him. That yep. you know these fan pages. I mean, they to them he he can do no wrong. And then you have some that you know. And trust me, anytime I tweet anything about Vinnie Vincent, I'm ready to take it on the chin because it's, it's <laughs> almost like, oh, uh, you know, they they say, oh, there's the he she, there's oh, this, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. just I don't respond to that. But no. it's honestly, man, if the guy got his shit together, sky's the limit, Mike, and you know that. Yep. Sky's the limit. Agree. So let's fast forward a bit. So the status of the Kiss Camp financially and, and, and all their kind of touring status around 1995. Uh, so let's yep. just say they did not reunite with the original band and they released Carnival of Souls or whatever they were planning on doing. 
where where would they have been, Bob? You would think they just would be playing clubs and theaters? What would have happened to Kiss in 95? State fairs. State fairs, yeah. State fairs, yep. usually. State fairs, just because they knew the writing was on the wall, they knew it. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing that always pisses me off when you see the interviews with just Gene and Paul where they'll say, everything's all rosy in Kiss world, we're going to keep going forward. And, you know, I like Carnival Sos. I think it's a decent record. Yeah, it's got Is some it cool a great follow-up to Revenge? No, no, not at all. I mean, you to even call that a follow up is is it's a joke. Yeah, and honestly, it was them trying to be something they really they they really were not. You know, it was just you know Kiss doing the whole grungy thing, tuning down and all that. I get it. You want to stay relevant. I get all that. Because, my God, they've always done that. They've always chased trends. A lot of bands chase trends. They, we were just talking about it. They did disco. You know, They've done it a million exactly. and one times. They've done 80s metal. Yeah. They've done it all. Everybody wants to do a blues record. Well, we're all blues bands now. You know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, like when Striper, well, I'm not going to get off subject, when Striper grew beards. And <laughs> law, like, where's the Bumblebee costumes? Well, they, know, they went from blue, blue to black, blue and black instead of yellow. Exactly. Black. Exactly. Yeah. Everybody, was, everybody was chasing the whole blues thing. But getting back to Kiss, Honestly, they knew they knew that things weren't all that great in the Kiss, in Kiss world. Right. They knew it, and, 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 and maybe Paul would have went on and done a solo tour, solo album. But the question would always remain: Well, what about Kiss? You know, Gene didn't seem too interested at that point. You know, after Revenge, and let's not kid ourselves: the Revenge tour was a bust. Yep. It wasn't successful. Yep. There was a lot of canceled shows. There was a lot. There's a lot of empty theaters. I'm sorry, empty arenas. Yep. So, honestly, the writing was on the wall. After they did that little, you know, convention tour, and, you know, that was kind of nice for fans. And they, that was they, awesome. They sold a lot of tickets, and that was an expensive thing. Why? Because KISS did that all on their own. They didn't bring anybody in. They made all the money. And that's one thing I'll always, I'll always respect about them. They're always hands-on. They're always, you know, putting the mannequins up, and, you know, they had all their people there. It, it was very, very nice. But could they do that for a second year in a row? Nope. No. No. And honestly, at that point, they all needed each other. And I'm talking about the original band. Yep. And they know it. You know, we could go back and forth about what saved Kiss, what saved Kiss. We wouldn't be talking about Kiss today had Peter and Ace not agreed to put makeup on. Yep. Period. Yep. So, but yeah, if you're asking me what, what, what would happen to Kiss, State Fair Circuit. Yep. Because they, they started playing a few of them back then, too. Yeah. They were paid big money to do it. But honestly... We know bands on the state fair circuit. You know, you, you're all these acts. You play the hits. Yep. Promoters weren't interested, Mike, and they won't admit it. But promoters weren't interested in a Kiss tour without makeup. They wanted the original band, and that's all they wanted. And it's amazing how much muscle promoters actually have, mm-hmm. because you know they're, they'll they'll say, "Hey, man, you know, like we we talked about Rainbow. You know, they." Promoters wanted Joe Lynn Turner. They wanted they wanted that rainbow. That she wanted to give them something else. So again, they're putting up all the money. They take all the loss. So basically, they're dictating to you. Well, Gene, Paul, we want Peter and we want Ace. We don't care if you hate each other. We know fans will buy that up, and buy that up they did in 1996. So, <laughs> oh yeah, man, big yeah. time, big time. And you know what? One quick thing about Carnival of Souls. Now, like we said, you know, Kiss did pop and disco, and they did '80s metal, and it seemed like it always it worked. Work. But for some reason, man, and this happened to Motley Crue and everybody else, it was yeah. it was a different change when we went from the you know the '80s scene to the '90s scene. And it was, and I've talked about this with a million and one people on the podcast. Is if you were associated with the '80s in the '90s, nobody wanted to know anything about you. You know what they I mean? They wanted nothing to nothing do, with, do you. with you. Nothing. And, and, and even Kiss trying to jump on the grunge train. There was no way that was ever going to work commercially. No way. Yeah. The same same thing like like you were just saying with Motley Crue. They switch up singers. They put out an amazing record, and nobody cared. No. Nobody cared. No. And they wouldn't because have cared if, wanted, if uh, people, Vince Neil yeah. was in it either. I don't think they would have cared if Vince Neil was there either. Yeah. People. Yeah. Would would they have cared that much? Because I I remember when Vince rejoined the band. I went I went to the show. I thought it was great. I still I didn't know they still hated each other. You know. But <laughs> again. Yeah, but I mean, Vince put out a couple of really great solo records too. Mm-hmm. That was good for. I think that was good for everybody. I think so. Too. You know, um, I, I I I really do. And but how long can you keep it up? You know, yep. Vince was good for for a few solo records. I think two or whatever. But 
I mean, honestly, would people really want to see a third record or a fourth record? No. I mean, people wanted him back with Motley. Yep. And and it's just the way it is. I mean, like you said, if you if you were associated with the you know anything with the had had anything to do with the eighties, and you were trying to come into the nineties, look what happened to Poison. Same thing. Ooh. Yeah. They don't. They wanted nothing to do with you because you you were old news at that point. You were. And I hate that term, hair metal. Sometimes it just irritates me, but I get it. But, you know, some of these bands sold millions and millions of records, and all of a sudden, they're just, what happened to everybody? Where did, where did everyone go? Yeah. You know, why 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 is Doc in a, a band that was selling, like, at least a couple of million copies selling a couple thousand or a couple hundred, you know? Yeah. Where, yeah. where did everybody go? You know what thing, I saw, I mean, the thing that never made sense to me? is they all went on, a, a good bunch of them went on to CMC Records. Do you remember CMC Records? Yes, yes, Okay. yes. And at that point, you're on a they had everybody. super small label, right? Yes. Why the hell are Dokken and Warrant doing grunge albums? What do you expect I, to accomplish? I know, I know. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Stupid. Warrant's another band too, man. You can have Jamie Lane. I know we were we were talking about him yesterday. We got I was tagged in that conversation. Um, I can't really add much to a Jamie Lane conversation. I saw them open for Paul Stanley. I saw them open for uh, Motley. They're a great band. He is a tremendous songwriter. Oh Jamie yeah. Lane. Yep. But again, why would he be? Again, you're trying to be relevant in the '90s, and this guy is a clear. He's a he's clearly just a great songwriter. Yep. Why is he not writing for someone like like Dee Snyder did, like Celine Dion, and make that money? Prove your worth. Yep. Write a hit. Write a top forty hit. Yep. You know when when you read Dee Snyder his interviews when he talks about the Celine Dion, I think it's a Christmas song he wrote for her or whatever it was. He said it paid for this house, that house, this, that. I can imagine the royalties from something like that. But it's I, again, why would you want to go grunge when you're basically the audience that built you up and loved you? really doesn't even want nothing to do with grunge. No. So it just, it just doesn't make sense. It, Mike, if I can be honest, give me the spandex. Give me the Aquanet <laughs> hair. That's what I want. That's yeah. what I want. Yeah. I want the dock and under lock and key. That's what I want to see. Yep, I agree 100%. It's crazy. So, Well, hey, now it's time. We're given the keys to the Kiss Kingdom. We can do whatever projects we want. Uh, go first, Bob. Tell, tell us some of the projects that you would uh, initiate. Okay, I've got a lot of pet projects here, <laughs> but if I could do one, you could do more I than one. Do, you could do four. Do, okay, you yeah, do as many as you want. Well, I'll I'll, name, I'll name mine, and I'll just kind of go down the list. Okay, and if I start to ramble, just you know, cut me loose. <laughs> um, I do an elder box set. Yes, nice. And this is why I do an elder box set. Okay, so for for, for years, a lot of fans, you go on YouTube, the same bootlegs have kind of been out there for years. Mm -hmm. They're not hard to find. Um, the Friday stuff, some of the demos. But did you know, Mike, there are more things out there that the band doesn't have. Really? And now I will tell you this, um, and I'm sure once this airs, someone might say, hey, I, I heard it. No, you haven't heard it. So that afternoon of Fridays was tape two, and Paul Stanley is teaching Ace Freely the guitar solo. Oh, okay. I believe to the oath. Okay. Or I, I think it was the oath. All right. And it is a train wreck. It's un, it's unbelievable because you have Paul continuously stopping showing him parts that has never been released. Ooh. The sound check alone is is it's un it's unbelievable. And but yet but wait but wait there's, there's more. more. <laughs> there's more, Mike. Recently. Some elder demos from the Ace and the Hole studios have surfaced. Ooh. Um, these are fantastic because it's only Gene, Ace, Eric Carr, and Bob Ezrin, and they're talking between stuff. Wow. This stuff has never seen the light of day. It's incredible, and I think fans would pay through the nose to hear it. Mm -hmm. I really do. I, there are, there's so much elder stuff, elder material out there that no one has really even heard, that I think a box set would be just amazing. And again, we were just talking about that. People love the Elder now. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they'd shell out 150 or 200 bucks for an Elder box set, I don't know. I think they would. Just because 
there was a bootleg elder box set that came out that was three hundred dollars limited to 100 pieces and it sold right out and basically all it had was the friday stuff that we've heard a thousand times that is readily available on youtube mm -hmm. and it sold right out why because the presentation was just candy like mm -hmm. picture discs bookers, books stuff that kiss nerds go crazy over and Again, the sound check stuff to Fridays is every Kiss fan should hear it. It's you, you never heard anything like it. That sounds wicked. never. It's amazing. Um, my number two project, if Kiss would allow, I would like to do what they kind of proposed back in '79: a full-on Kiss Saturday morning cartoon. Nice. Basically, in the Dynasty, you know, kind of. Uh, the Dynasty era. Super Kiss. You know, full-on full, full, full on Super Kiss. You know, none of this Scooby-Doo crap, none of that. Super Kiss, the, the bright costumes, the superpowers, you know, fighting Abner Devereaux and whatever crazy thing that would come their way. You know, I'm sure Hanna-Barbera had a lot to do with, uh, you know, I mean, the thing was almost done. And then, they, you know, coin put the kibosh on it because they didn't want to risk being overexposed in <laughs> 1979. But I would do that. Okay, I think my third project, I would like to delve into the Kissology stuff again. I would like to put out just one be-all, end-all Kissology box set. Not all the same bullshit that's been out there that every fan has, that we've all seen a thousand times, re-edited. Trust me when I say it, there's so much more out there that fans don't, <laughs> don't know about and haven't seen. And it, it, I think it would be spectacular because everybody keeps talking about it's, it's, it's almost an endless, an endless discussion on Twitter is Kissology 4. And I, I get, I get asked that a lot. And I just, I just, I'll say it straight up. It's not, it's never coming out. It's mm. not ever going to come out. And the band doesn't own the rights to the name anymore. Really? So, yeah. So it, again, when, when someone says, like Paul Stanley said, oh, it's done. Or Tommy Thayer said, it's done. Sure. I'm sure it's done to some, to some degree. I'm sure there's a version of Kissology done. But why haven't you put it out? Makes sense, right? Yeah. Eagle, I think Eagle Rock put out, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Eagle Rock that put out their Vegas little residency uh, DVD mm -hmm. or whatever it was. So why couldn't um, Eagle Rock put out a Kissology? Hmm. Right? Yeah. Makes sense, why? man. Makes sense. It makes sense. But yeah, honestly, I would put out a be-all, end-all Kissology DVD, Blu-ray um, box set of things that you've never seen. Like a lot of fans would like to have the Animalize '84 concert that Kiss doesn't own the rights to. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. I love that and all this stuff. That, I love. That. I could watch that over and over. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a, there's a reason that the, the band has never put a lot of that stuff out officially because they don't own it. So I would I would put out that, and then to piggyback off that, I would put out deluxe editions, something mm -hmm. that was proposed many times. Um, and then, you know, kind of put the kibosh on. So I would, I would, I would put out deluxe editions. I know fans, geeky fans, if you give them something, at least two different songs, and there's enough of it out there in Kiss World, they'll eat it up. Mm -hmm. Especially if you package it right. They will eat it up. They don't care if it's just Paul Stanley sitting there humming Love Gun. They'll eat it up. <laughs> so, they would. What, uh, what, uh, what would, uh, your four, uh, Dream Kiss projects well, be mine. Well, well, before I jump into mine, let, let me just add. Let me piggyback on a couple of yours. I it, Elder Box set. I love it, and I think that if it ever yep. were to happen, it needs to be like a wooden box with a freaking door oh, handle God. on it. <laughs> it has to be. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> so killer, man. And then, so wait, real quick, the cartoon. Did were there ever like concept art for this thing that you know of? For which one? The, the, the Kiss um, cartoon. Well, like what they talked about doing in 79, is there any concept art that was ever floating around for it or no? Okay. That's a great question. So when I, when I asked Gene about that, he said there was. Oh, man. He said they were all on board, Hannah Barbera, and it was in their dynasty costume. Oof. And yeah, it was yeah, going that. to be on NBC. Wow. But he said that he owned all the original art, and for whatever reason, I think he still owns it. That's something that was never auctioned off. Man. But... According to Gene, it's out there. It is out there. And um, I, would, I would give anything, I, honestly, I would give anything to see a Saturday. Can you imagine a Saturday morning Kiss cartoon in 79? Can oh, you imagine that? That would be killer. That would be so good. I, it would be amazing. I mean, 
sure you know your diehards would you know all the you know, the fans that uh, you know basically love that band when the, you know live came out they kind of turn their nose at it but you, know, you got a guy like me that loves that band unconditionally i'm like bring it on i don't care bring it on i would love the, it. The, 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 the more they're over the, the, the more they're overexposed the better i don't care i want i want more give me super kiss you got but, it so i'm gonna pick you so mine are similar like i said i i, I think i agree i would actually Along with the box set, I'd want like Elder kind of reimagined, uh, beefed up production, get the dialogue back in there, make the thing a little more coherent. Um, That'd be great. Same thing with Unmasked. I think Unmasked, I'd like to hear Unmasked with a little bit more balls, a little beefed up, uh, because I think there's some great songs on there, but you know the production yep. is, is very poppy. It's cool, but I'd like to see what would those songs sound like if they were beefed up a little bit. One, I've got the last two will be more off the wall ones, but I always thought a Kiss fan album. Uh, it would be crowdfunded by the fans. Uh, the band would use old school equipment, and the songs would all be submitted by fans, written by fans. And let's say there's a bulk of them, and then the fans would vote on what songs Kiss would actually re- record that were written by fans. And you know, Kiss has always talked about how much they are for the fans. Uh, this would be right. great because it'd be a, a, t- a time where the band and the fans could interact and and make a creation uh, together. I mean, they would never do it, but I think it would be killer. <laughs> How cool, how cool would that be, right? I mean, you know, especially some of these guys that, you know, especially some of these musicians that have kind of made it. Yeah. You're still a fan at heart. Yep. And yet you're recording with these guys. Can you imagine you're just a fan and you're recording with these guys? Mm-hmm. It would be insane. Like, you, you would, you'd probably be afraid to even raise your voice. Oh, hey, can you turn up my, my, my microphone? Oh, it's perfect the way it is. You know, yeah. that, you know that kind of thing. It, it, would be, it would be really cool. It'd be, it, That's a great idea. Somebody should and do it. Any band should do that because I think that would be just a cool collaboration. You know what I mean? I think, I think so. I think so. Going out with a bang, uh, the Kiss movie. And it's going to be Bohemian Rhapsody meets the Avengers. Basically, we're going to have a a, a real story kind of running, and then a, a, another story that kind of runs kind of, you know uh, parallel with it. And it basically tells where these powers came from, if they came from some kind of other universe, and then ultimately somehow the stories mix, and now the powers get put onto these regular people who are forming a band. And then you know I don't know where you go from there. I'm just I'm just an idea guy. I don't have it all fleshed out, but I, that, God, that, that's, inc- that's what it would be. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. I think that'd be incredible. I really do. I really do. I think that would work too. I really, I, that would be a movie I'd go see. I really would. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate because it. Kiss, Kiss just kind of, you know, they 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 kind of lend themselves to that. You know, they really do. They already have the look. Yep. The character names, the superpowers that are kind of already there. I mean, that could be everything that Phantom of the Park wasn't. Yeah. Right. I, I it really could, and I think it would be. That would be amazing. You'd get the music. Yep. Now, let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, would the band be recording original music for the soundtrack, or would we be just going with hits? I don't know. I mean, that would could all be up in the air, but I think the main thing that would come out of it is, like you said, you, you know, you had cartoon fire come out of somebody's mouth. Now we're going to have kick-ass, special effects, people, you know, yeah. computer graphics, stuff transforming, whatever it is that you, you – whatever you can imagine is you can do – and, you know, musically, yeah, who knows? Maybe the band could, could do some new songs. Maybe you'd have um, the actors um, actually do the song. I don't, I, who knows? You know what I mean? I don't really know, but um, it, it would be fun. It, it would, would be, be fun. I think anything anything Kiss-related movie-wise would be really cool. I mean, you know, we got the Detroit Rock City movie, which was kind of like that coming of age. Mm-hmm. Not really kind of what I wanted out of a Kiss movie, no. you know, but the elements to the band were there, so it kind of made it cool, and it was kind of loosely based in the 70s. Um so that's, you know, for that, that's cool. I mean, we also have Phantom of the Park. That is this endured cult classic. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's funny, too, is Gene actually said that um, they were going to make another movie. And it was all ready to go. And it was, everything was ready to go. It wasn't going to be a sequel, but more of a continuation. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, a coin said, well, I don't think we should do it. Hmm. And I think it was more a coin and basically Paul that was like, I don't think we should do it at all. You know, but, mm-hmm. you know, Gene was all in. He oh, didn't yeah. care about all the exposure. He just didn't care. But, I mean, look at the career he went on to have, kind of. It wasn't, a, a, you know, not a lot of big movies, but, you know, you know his movies when you see them. Mm-hmm. But, God, that would be an incredible movie to see if we could get Kiss, an Avengers-style Bohemian Rhapsody movie. I think that would be just amazing. I really do. I say we pitch and, it and, to and, him. And, Let's pitch it to him. <laughs> 
God, am I, if I could get an audience with him, that would be great. <laughs> I would, uh, I would pitch that to him because I'll be honest with you, uh, the, the one guy that I talk to that, uh, does talk to a couple of members in the band, um, I've kind of mentioned things in the past, you know, and it's always like, we'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Yeah. And I don't overstep. Because I don't want, I know my role, you know what I mean? Oh, I don't, yeah. I don't overstep. So if, if, if I'm asked a question, I answer it and, and I, I leave it there. Yep. Smart, smart man, Bob. Well, sir, this has been a great conversation. I, I think people will, will really enjoy hearing some more of these uh, KISS stories. And who knows, you know, I'm sure they'll all be interjecting on Twitter and, and, and telling us what they think, right? Yeah, I hope so. Let's, let's hope it's a positive, uh, it's a positive thing. I hope they enjoy it. I mean, again, if I have a lot of lazy talk friends, I just, uh, you know, I'm not used to being interviewed, so sometimes my fumble my words, but, uh, you know, I don't mean to. But um, my heart's in the right place. If people like it, more power to it. Because, I mean, more power to them. Because, I mean, someone mentioned to me once they wanted me to do a Twitter thing called Coffee and Kistory every Saturday. I was like, I'm not doing that. No way. I'm not doing Coffee and Kistory. That just sounds... Wayne, man. But, have a pipe. Know, you can smoke a pipe, put on your slippers. Answer questions all Saturday morning. <laughs> no, you gotta have a life, Bob. You gotta have a life outside of all that. So, but yeah, I, I, I enjoy it to an extent. I even got a theme song to go with it. So there. Yeah. All right, brother. Well, hey, Thank thanks you. for yeah, thanks for the time. It was always a pleasure. And who knows? Maybe down the road we'll we'll do a, another one. Who knows? Okay, Mike. Let me know, man. Anything I can help you with, anytime. Uh, always a pleasure, my friend. Yes. Have a good night, Bob. Well, that was a great episode with Bob. A lot of fun. Well, hey, there's a new show on my channel called Father to Son Metal Reactions. I try to get my kid into 80s metal that I love. So make sure you check out that video. Check out our first one. It's Wasps. I want to be somebody. Until next time, rock on! You think you know a lot about kiss? Compared to Bob, man, you don't know shit. You need kiss awesomeness, he's got it for you. Look on his Twitter, yeah, you know it's true.